creating a legacy, building a legacy, living through the process of building that legacy. That's what we're going to talk about in today's Rise to Thrive show. If you are coming through, then please do let me know. How are we doing? I think it's safe to say I completely fucked up that intro. <laughs> um, how are we doing? It's Friday. It's nice to be back down the seafront with the pups. A little bit of routine after, um, if you like, a business seminar over the last four days. Connecting with people again. It's really nice to be able to do that again, right? After the lockdown, after being restricted for so long to get out and go and see people. Um, it was really great. I hope you can hear me because it is like 40 miles an hour winds down here. It's crazy. So listen, what I want you to do, if you know the answer, is in the comments, in one line or paragraph or whatever, however long you want to do to express yourself, is write down what you think your legacy is right now. And if you don't feel like you have a legacy, don't just make one up. Just say, I don't know it at the minute. Now, I want to talk about legacy because I think it's really important because it creates part of our emotional connection to us showing up and being a role model and being that version of of ourselves that we want to be. Um, And yesterday, um, it it was my turn or my round to talk about the number one thing that was holding me back. Um, in my business and I answered that it was me and my own mindset and the hardship that I constantly put myself under and I never really admitted it before but I always put myself under self pressure you know a lot of the time I'm always telling people not to be hard on themselves but yeah I could be a hypocrite because I'm so hard on myself in terms of business and thinking that I'm not making an impact or thinking I'm not where I want to be. And it's constant that me versus me battle. And when Phil, who's my mentor and and, and my best mate, asked me, what's your legacy? I turned around and said it was that I wanted to help men become the greatest version of themselves so that they don't lose those vital relationships in their life, i.e. wife and kids. Dip it here, please. And the reason and the meaning, emotional connection with that legacy was because that was me all of those years ago. When I allowed myself to um, be selfish, when I allowed my ego, when I allowed everything else to destroy everything that I had at that time when I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Digby, here. Up here. Up. Um, that's what I want to help empower men to do. I want men to be living a life where they feel well balanced, where they understand themselves, where their levels of self-awareness are huge so that they know when they're falling into those pits of frustration and anger and suffering and so that they don't take that home with them. And it's been a, I've always felt like that my legacy was just to help men become much better men, to empower men, to actually allow themselves to feel vulnerable, allow themselves to cry, allow themselves to forgive themselves and that was all good, but it never really connected. And I, and, I, and I truly believe that the two circumstances in my life that drive me to do what I do are that one of me allowing the family to crumble, but also my dad dying when I was six. And, I, and, I, and my dad didn't live the healthiest of lifestyles. He used to smoke and drink and He was under large amounts of stress. The same stress that I see on many guys. And, you know, he died and I was left without dad at six. And I would, and I kind of feel that that legacy is that I want to make sure that you guys 
live way beyond seeing your own children get married but to see your grandkids to enjoy a full lasting ever life so that you can experience and squeeze as much of life as possible and gain as much experience as possible so I guess my legacy and mission is really to do that is to create this elite operator that not only is going to value and see the worth of the relationships that he has around them and be an elite operator so he doesn't fuck that up but also to make sure that you see your kids grow up get married have children and be around to watch the whole party unfold and I never really connected with that fully. In some ways I did, it was clouded. I kind of knew the mission, but going and, and, and opening up to it and, and I start crying quite openly and quite profoundly um, in front of everybody because the reason, because it just hit me there and then at that moment, it was, it was like my aha moment and it, and, and to recognize it really just helped, uh, really just triggered that emotion at that time. And I think that when you create your legacy, it's very much about what's the role model that, or what do you want your kids to see through their eyes of how you live your life? What are your values? What are the things that you push? What are the experiences that you want to show them? What do you want to teach them? I guess that when we die and we move on to whatever's next, how do the kids see us? How does our wife see us? How does our friends see us? How does the world see us? What did we offer the world? How do we improve the world? How do we make it a better place? Because in theory, that's what I'm trying to do is make sure that you are the elite operator so that you can create that legacy. Because if you're not the best version of yourself, you never really follow through on that legacy. You never really are the best version of yourself. You never really connect with the people that matter most. You never really reach your potential. You never really set the standard as high as it could be. So it's really difficult to do it when you're in that state of mind. So I think it's really important to take some time to think about what it's all about and what we're all doing it for and, and what's that legacy that we're hoping to leave. And making sure that we're in the right frame of mind to be able to do that. And I just wanted to share that this morning because I'm running out of time now. And when I think about the five day challenge now or the masterclass, that's very much what I think the theme of it is gonna be about. And if you haven't done it, you can come and you can come in, register for that and come and join us. Because when I hear the stories, very quickly, when I hear the stories of how men are connecting more with their children, um, but connecting more with their wives, that's the biggest win to me. There is no biggest win than a man reconnecting with his, hu with, with, with his wife and with his children and not being that that, that guy that's driving a wedge between them. It's huge. Oh, on that, have an amazing weekend. Um, I hope you're on our five-day masterclass. If you're not, join the link. And I will catch you at some point over the weekend, no doubt. Um, but have a good Friday. Enjoy your gin. Oh, spitting everywhere. Enjoy your gin. <coughs> have a good one.